Hey there vape fans, today we're going to talk about the Goliath V2 and we're going to rebuild it with my favorite build on it. I've been using this tank since last summer and it's still been my favorite tank to build on. Um, well, the fa my favorite results from a tank um, that I've had since then and I've tried them all since then that have come out and this one is just my favorite and I'm going to show you the build that I do on it. Um, to do this build you're going to need some 26 gauge. Uh, Canthal, uh, some cotton, a uh, two millimeter diameter uh, drill bit or something to build on. Um, and then you're going to need your usual build kit of, you know, screwdriver and some other stuff. And that should be all you need. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. First, though, I have to get some wire off of this. So we'll start just by taking a couple pieces of wire. A couple pieces of wire about, I don't know, eight inches long or so. Once you have that done, then you can put that back on your Addy stand. All right, so if you have one of our UD kits that looks like this kit here, comes with several different size bits and it has a handle for you to hold on to while you do it. I'm gonna use the two millimeter diameter size. And I want to show you the, the idea for this coil came from the, the Goliath originally comes with um, replacement coils. So that's the coil that's normally in the Goliath. Um, so when I was looking to rebuild it for the first time, I took some ideas from this in that they're doing a 6 wrap 26 gauge uh, macro coil with the spaces on there. Um, so I, I sought out to replicate that. There's a little less room inside of the RBA deck because of the way you have to mount them. This is a two millimeter diameter roughly um, that I'm going to build and, and the one that's in here is probably like a three diameter but we can't fit that in there. So I'm going to show you how I rebuilt it when I did that and since then I've had amazing results with this tank. Uh, never a dry hit, never leaks, never and always incredible flavor. So. That's where I got the idea from, is just the original stock coil that came with it. So you're going to mount your 2 millimeter diameter rod into your handle. And the way I do it, if you've never built a coil before, I kind of just hold my thumb off to the side of it, hold the, your thumb on the wire, and then you can start wrapping. And with this particular build, we're going to try to leave just a little space in between each wrap. So I got my six wraps there, about as equally spaced as, as they can be. And then we're just going to set that aside for now. And go ahead and build your other one. If you think that your loops are too far apart or anything, once assuming they're evenly spaced, you can kind of just scrunch them down a little like that and you can get rid of some of the excess space between them. So, once you have your two like that, you know, bend your leg out and trim your lead a little. So now we have our two coils that we're going to mount into this deck. And in case you didn't notice, yes, I have two two millimeter diameter rods. Uh, and the reason for that is on a two post deck, um, you essentially have to mount both the coils at the same time. Uh, because you can't screw one down without screwing the other one down, so even if you get one in there perfectly, you're going to have to unscrew it so that you can put the other one in there. So it helps to just do them both at the same time. And so that you don't mess up your coil, I like to keep this little rod in there um, while I'm mounting them. So that way, I, so that's why I have two. The rebuild kit only comes with one, so you would have to have two kits or just two screwdrivers that have a similar size. So I'm just going to look at this little coil and maybe pull apart any spaces that I think are too close together or anything like that, just so they're all evenly spaced. And you can just kind of tug at them with your thumbnail or whatever. Just move them apart a little or closer together if you think that's what they need. Straighten out your legs. And then you're going to go right on through with the six wraps with this particular gauge wire and diameter. It comes out to right about the, the width of this span between these post holes, so it actually works out pretty great. Once you have that one through, you kind of want to go to push it down a little so that the other one's not in your way when you go to put this one through. So straighten out your legs a little.
and go ahead and put that one through as well. Once you have them both in, this is what I do. So obviously I have both my bits in, so I can't really mess up the coil that much. You don't have to be too delicate when you have the rods in because they're holding the form of the coil. So what I'd like to do is I just kind of pinch them um, to try to get them as close to the post holes as possible. So I'm going to squeeze both of them kind of inward towards the post hole. That way the leads are nice and tight. And at that point is when I'm going to screw them down. So don't worry about the shape of the coil or how it's a little crooked right now. We can straighten that all out once we get them close to their post holes and tighten down. So now that I have them tightened down, I usually pull, just put them all kind of up, all the extra legs for now. You don't have to worry about trimming them, just so they're not in your way. Um, and then it's going to be hard to see because you have to pull towards yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten this out uh, on the side that is facing me. Um, kind of like that and then you're going to pull outward you can see the other end of my lead is wiggling a little when I move that that means that I need to tighten it down just a little more so go ahead and do that straighten it out pull it up a little pull it out um, and you're going to want to watch, mind the edge of the deck. That's where the chimney is going to actually screw over it on the bottom of those threads there. So you can't have your coil hang over that thread part at all, or else your chimney is going to touch the metal of the wire and you're going to short your deck. So when you're adjusting these, usually up is a pretty good, there's a little headroom on the upside, and that's how you can get, if you're a little too close to the edge. You obviously can't go any further out, so up is the way to go. And at this point, again, now that you've straightened it out a little, you can kind of go through and fix any legs that are, are wraps that are a little too long or too close together there. Alright. So I got that side about where I want it, so now I'm going to do the other side. So I've actually got this one tighten down a little significantly closer to the deck than the other one so I'm going to loosen it up just a little tiny bit. So now I have both the coils in there. Um, they're about the same length apart from each other as you can see they're nice and straight. I just leave those in there so that you can position and mess with and play with your coil all you want. So now at this point I'm pretty satisfied with where they're at. I might end up deciding that's different later but once we get it mounted. Um, so now you can pull these out for now. And once you have them pulled out and your leads are tightened down, then you can go ahead and trim the excess off of, off of the edges here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Once you've been to this point, as you can see, one of the legs is, it's not quite perfect, but um, you're going to be able to, at this point, throw it on your mod so that you can test how well the coils are firing. I've done this build enough times that I know roughly what the resistance will be. I know that it's going to be in a safe tolerance, so I'm going to put it right on the mod. If this is your first time building, do use an ohm reader before you put it on a mod because you could injure yourself potentially. I know it's going to wind up somewhere around 0.3. It does every single time within a few points of difference. So with your coil on there, you can go ahead and fire it up. Um, as you can see, mine came out to 0.32. Um, I'm sure when we just, if we play with it a little more, it would probably become 0.3 right about. Um, but the space that you put in between will affect it a little, so 0.32. Um, just kind of fire it to see that your coils are heating up evenly. Which, if you guys notice, this one on this side is heating up just a little faster than this one. So um, that usually means that you just need to tighten them up a little, is the first thing I'll try doing. So as you can see, the one's still heating up a little faster. If that happens to you, um, keep your drill bits handy. And you'll be able to just go in and kind of usually tweaking one just a little will uh, help that. They might not be at quite the same height. They might be a little further away from the deck just slightly. Uh, make sure it's cooled off a little before you do this. But um, just kind of pull it up, give it a pull, maybe move it just a little. See if you can't get them to be firing a little more evenly. They don't have to be perfect, but the more evenly they fire, the better.
All right, this one still fires just a little faster, but they're close enough now to where I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this is at 60 watts right now, and I would only run this build at like 30 or 40 in the Goliath, so the small difference there isn't going to be too big. Um, once you have them to that point, then you can get out your cotton. And some of the magic to working this RTA and every RTA, as you might know if you've tried to rebuild them before, is it's all in the wicking. Um, you don't want it to be too tight or too loose because that will affect the juice's capability to wick up into there and you're going to have a bad day if you get a dry hit. Um, that's another reason why I like the micro coil, um, sorry, the macro coil spaced out um, on uh, RTA style uh, deck is that the little gaps in the coil make it so that it's not being choked off. A lot of people do micro coils as the standard build because it's the easiest to do. Um, as you saw when we were wrapping this, it's, it's kind of hard to get the spaces perfect, and that's where the hard part comes in, which is why people usually prefer microcoils, because you put them right next to each other, and that's how you do it. Um, there's no guesswork there, and it's, you can squeeze them together and get them even closer together if that's what you need to do. Um, with this type of coil, though, I like it better because I feel like the, it, the microcoil chokes off. Uh, it becomes like a sleeve there, essentially, that gets hot, and it's hard for the juice to get up into that sleeve when it's seeing the resistance of the heat on the outer edges of it. It doesn't even want to go in there. Uh, whereas when you have this space in between, it allows it to wick a little better. Not only that, but vapor comes off directly through this, this, the sides of these little coils. Instead of it being a sleeve and letting juice out, it'll come up all through that. So that's why I believe this style is better for RTAs. So you're going to get your just a little bit of cotton and roll your wick on the end and bring it on through. And with this particular one, if you're using if you're using Koga cotton, generally you kind of have to trim that if you're using just regular cotton here. What I like to do is if I'm getting to this point where now that I'm here it's kind of tight, I don't want to mess up the coil that I just built. Um, so what I do is I pinch at this end just a little, just pinch a little bit of the fibers out, and then try again. So now I have it coming through, right? I have a little bit of slack, that's what you want in this going back and forth. There's a little slack, but it's not so loose that it would just slide right out, right? There's a little bit of tension, but enough so that it goes back and forth. And once you have that, then you're going to want to trim off. Well, let's put our other wick in first before I start trimming. So once you have both your wickings in, about like that, there's going to be some excess. And the way on this particular RTA that you know how much you need to trim off is roughly the outer diameter of this circle of the 22 millimeters of the RDA. If you look down at it from the top, then that's what you want to trim off. So I'm going to do that now. Then what you're going to want to do is test. This is how the Goliath and most RTAs work, but the Goliath in specific it has this little ledge right here. Let's see if I can get that close enough for you. So you got this little ledge right here where you want the cotton to rest on the first part of the ledge, but you don't want it to block the hole fully. Okay. So in order to test that, you're just going to push your cotton down kind of towards it and see if you have too much. On this one, I obviously have too much. It's covering up the whole thing. Okay? So now I'm just going to go in, and that's what I'm going to do to each one of these wicks. I'm going to push it down up against the well and see that there's not too much before I start getting it wet, because cotton's harder to cut when it's wet than when it's dry. So we're just kind of testing our parameters here. All right, so I got them all at the length I want them now. And what you're going to do then is you can saturate them with your juice so that they'll stick into the well where you position them. Got a little bit of Mount Baker vapor float on here. Once you have it saturated, then the wick will stay where you kind of push it. I have one of these cotton hook tools that comes in our Ude Master Kit. Um, it's just kind of a little poker thing that's 
good for this particular application because there's not much surface area for the cotton to stick to, so when you press it down onto something, it'll stay. So I'll do one and then I'll show you what it looks like. When you have an edge done properly, it's going to look like that. Notice it's on the first ledge of the channel, but not down into the second part of the channel. So I'll do that with all of them, and then I'll show you that. That's what it'll look like when you're done. You have the edge of each cotton on the ledge of the platform, but not actually taking up the wicking hole. So the juice can still flow in from the bottom and go up to the wick and go the rest of the way up to the coil. Now I'm going to fill my tank. Take your RTA off of your mod. So once you get it put back together, you can put it on your tank. And as you can see, as I told you, once we're done messing with it, exactly 0.3 on that build. I knew that would be the case because I build this coil every week for the past, uh, since last summer. So about every week I rebuild my coil and every time it comes out to 0.3. So um, no exception here. So with that build, um, in uh, my opinion, if you try this build, you will be extremely satisfied with your Goliath. It might take your Goliath to new heights that you never knew existed. Um, there's something unique about the way the air intake is on the Goliath V2. Um, a lot of coils now, they have the coil goes directly down into this area and has an airflow opening at the bottom. It's really hard to show you on camera here, but with the Goliath V2, this whole area has a flat top and there's two holes in the flat top of that. And that's where your airflow sucks up to the coil. So instead of having your coil hole down here in this area, and when you suck, you're getting like a cross flow through there, and what comes up in there is what can come up in there. Um, instead, there's just two holes in the top here, so everything that comes through here um, goes right through those two holes. And there's just something really good about it for flavor, in my opinion. Um, and with this build, if you build it just like I just did, I guarantee you it will never leak. Um, well, with Max VG or 2080 anyway, I haven't had a, I haven't used this a lot with 5050 or anything, but Max VG or 2080, this build will not leak, and you won't get any dry hits until this thing is completely empty, like not a drop in it. It should still be able to go for that long. Um, with this build, I still generally change my wick every week, or sorry every day or so and like I said I change the coil every week um, that's just a kind of a personal preference thing if the flavor starts to be lacking even just a little bit that's when I'll change the cotton usually that's it for today vape fans if you like this video be sure to like comment subscribe and as always vape for your own life